I have finished my most recent eclectic page glue book. Today I'm going to give you a flip through of the pages and then show you how I assemble a new one. So here is my current completed eclectic page glue book. I have a little series going. So here is the one I did previously and my original is here. So I kind of like this size. This is my favorite size to work with. It's approximately four inches by six inches, maybe a little bit more, maybe four and a half by six and a half, something like that. So let me show you what it looks like inside. This was from a box of tea. So just the packaging for a box of tea. Um, and then I collaged on the back side with a little bit, a few things added to the front. Sometimes I keep things just as they are or add just a few small things. And then other times I'll create a full collage like this on the left. This is a playing card. Here I have this repeating theme of Japanese postage stamps. And then in addition to that, I have some text writing, um, a cool photo from the 1940s, which I tore out, tore up, I just wanted that portion. And then I layered it in among a bunch of other things. Here's another photograph that I've torn um, it was just a piece of the rest of the building on this side, which I thought was interesting just to have the people and the vehicle. This is a full postcard, and I just added this small piece of what is looking to be like a stamp. Just some interesting layers. I really loved this background paper with the gold. It's kind of maroon and gold and I wanted to highlight it with this colored postage stamp and then also the pink down here also kind of brings it all together. And then I've got some really cool vintage photos, both our originals and also this player's cigarettes uh, trade card, which is original. Just layers of interesting things. I used some rubber stamping here and then on here This was a book page folded on itself and then I think I glued it I glued it together so that it has a little bit of consistency and that's pretty much it. Here's another postcard. Um, I didn't add anything to it because I just love this postcard when my family and I went to Mammoth in California and I just thought it was so cool just, just to have it. On the back side I collaged a bunch of things in the theme with green. I think that's that's kind of the common the common thread that that goes uh, on these two pages. Also the green in this ledger paper. I have this banknote which is really cool um, and then some vintage of check and some vintage pages underneath. This was a rubber stamp that I did onto a tea bag. So I opened up the tea bag, emptied the tea out, and then used the bag as a base with and then rubber stamped on it. Another thing I like to do is to take a piece of napkin. You know how how there's layers in the napkin and the topmost part that you know you use that in a collage but then there's like a middle part and a base part and on the base I rubber stamped on it and that, again super thin and it's really neat when you can use that as a layer onto something else. I also like this technique where I take a um, envelope from a business letter and then fold it so that you can tell that part of it was the front of the envelope and then you can see both sides and then on top of that rubber stamp on top of that. So this is a postcard background and then I use double-sided tape to add another postcard on top of that. And then this, um, this is a die, a die cut of, of some of a flower or flowers. Here's a photo that is again torn to fit the space. This is another postcard. So I just like the colors of this and just kind of the design elements to it. 
and a photo on this page looks uh, pretty good. And there's a piece of washi tape towards the back and then just some vintage papers, another photo and a die cut. This is just a little piece of postcard. This was this was all I had was just this portion, so I just put it in here as, you know, something interesting to flip through. This photo is torn out, and then these are wings from a uh, roll of washi tape. This is a piece of wallpaper, and I love it when I can find these pieces of wallpaper because, honestly, a lot of my pages don't have a lot of color. It's really hard to find color, um, vintage color. So when you have a piece of wallpaper and these old designs and it's you know got the vintage paint, um, that's really awesome. This is a lot of color, but this is just a sticker. So this is a more modern piece. Still, I, th I thought it was interesting here, so um, I included it. This piece is left over from another um, postcard. So oftentimes I will tear down or tear off a piece of the postcard that I want in another collage. But then I hold on to the other little remnants if there's something interesting with it, and then I can use it in the rest of, um, in any other additional collage. Another vintage photo. Here's a piece of um, napkin that is the topmost layer. Just some more interesting layers here. This is another page that's folded on itself. Okay, this is a postcard and then I just attached this and this. Um, here we go with this. Um, this was a copy of a postcard, um, you know, just a printout. And sometimes, sometimes I do like to use these printouts. If it's the right color scheme, if it's, if it's the colors that I'm looking to recreate or to use in another part of the collage, See, for example, I have this kind of cream colored, this pink over here, and so it matched with the pink. You know, then I go ahead and I use them. Okay, here I had, I don't know quite what this was, something about some kind of card where you recognize, you learn to recognize different kinds of plants, something like that. Um, and then this is a receipt at the base, and then just layers of interesting things. I kind of wanted the greens to match, so that's how that how I came up with these pieces here. This these colors are um, kind of matching. Also, I've got some greens that are being shared here, and the greens that are carrying over on this side as well. This collage I did when I was in the Netherlands, and so I had this postcard that I posted to myself from the Netherlands, and so I wanted to keep it in here, even though it is not attached into the book itself. And I didn't want to glue it onto here because this is, this is a rather pretty envelope just by itself. So I just leave it in here like this. This was on the back of the envelope. So this is an envelope. This was made by a friend of mine, Petra, from the trip that I had to the Netherlands. Okay, so this is the end of this book. Now I want to create a new one. So what do I do? So I have been using this system of binding with this, which is a Zutter Bind It All. That's what it's called. It comes along with these these wires that you use, you cut out or cut down the wires, the amount that you need, and then you put it in here and then use this to smush it on with your, with the pages into it. I will demonstrate how this works as, you know, once I, once I come to it. So this one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how many rings I will need. 
Here's what the cut looks like. Okay, so if I take this, I will do the same exact thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, let's do it this way. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So then I cut it right here. Okay. All right, so now what do I do? How do I choose pages? And how do I pick a cover? So I have been holding on to this um, thing that is used for holding on to letters, right? And in here, I have a bunch of different kinds of papers, things that I kind of set aside for using in these books. So I'll just pull it all out and see what I, what I can come up with. So for covers, I could use something like this, which is just a piece of cardboard. That's what I used for this one, for example. But then I need to actually do something on the cover. And I wanted to go an easier route. So I had these left over from a book that uh, I, I needed to throw out because the pages were just really dirty and messed up. But I saved the covers and I thought that I could use this as a cover because it's a very nice, you know, thick cardboard and it'll work. And it's a good size too. So I think this is what I'm going to use. So I'm gonna set those aside now for pages on the inside, I can do these. This is a paper pad. Sometimes I like to get pages out of a paper pad just, you know, for added interest. So I'm going to take one of these. Here's a cool postcard. I will use this. I also grabbed one of these cards and I have this is also kind of a heavier so I will use that. I have so many postcards so so many just stacks and stacks so I will just you know take random things and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set aside I'm trying to find 20 pieces Okay, I have used these a lot in the past, so I'm not going to use it. This is very nice. I might use that. 20 pieces. Um, Mono Lake. That's nice. This is cool. I will use that. Some of these are from older ones that I've already used before. Sure, I'll take that. This is good too. These are rather thin, so I'm thinking no. I could take it and, and um, glue on the inside to make it a little bit thicker, but uh, I'll think about it. I'll just put it up there. So move those over. This is very thin. I do like it though, I'll, I'll take it. Um, This be, could be good if I, you know, double it up. Here's another interesting, what is this, a postcard? Yep, postcard. So I'll take this one. I probably won't cover that up, but just have it in there for interest. Okay, and then this is good. Packaging, food packaging, possibly, we'll see. So let me count how many pieces do I have here? One, two, 13, 14. Okay, I need six more. 15. Okay, that's 16. Oh, I have a bingo card. 17, use that. And 20. 
So now I, what I want to do is to figure out the shape, the size. I want to make sure that my papers are more or less going to fit in the covers that I have. So obviously this page sticks out too much, so I need to cut it down. Now normally I would be doing this with my rotary tool, cutting it very precisely, but I don't have it with me, so I'm just going to do it like this. Okay. And the top, yeah, I'll cut off a little bit. No, but I do have scissors, so at least with the top, I will make it straight. Okay, so I measure again all my papers. It's good, fits nice, okay. So now I take my zutter tool Okay, so for the covers, I'm going to stick them both in at the same time and then eyeball it as best as I can so it's in the middle. And for the next ones, I will take them and just line them up so that they're centered and then punch them out like this. All right, now that I've got all my 20 pieces, now I want to determine the order. What do I want where and what combinations? Sometimes if I see something and I think, oh, these two pages would go really well together, then I know that I want these, these two like this, okay? This is black, so it might be neat to have these two together, right? So that looks good. That's fine. What about this? Maybe, maybe this and this goes. And this is nice. Um, sure, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, look at it, what I did. I accidentally put it twice. Um, I'm not sure if I want this one anymore. I'll set it aside for now. This in here. This one is quite bold. So I have to find something that's gonna balance that white. Yeah, I guess so. That, even that's okay. Well, let's see this. I'm doing from small to big, but I don't necessarily want that. Um, you know, on these pages, it's small, bigger, biggest. Um, so I'm not necessarily trying to do that. If I want to stick something in here, the small one in here, I can. So let's see, maybe, maybe like this. And then this last one, maybe here. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go with 19. And I think I'm gonna put, let's see, do I want, do I want this first or this first? Which one do I want first? Fast mail, I think I want this one first. So I'm gonna swap these out and put this on top like that. My covers, I couldn't get this off, so I am going to just put it at the back. Okay. And this one will be my cover. So this is what my book looks like. So I will take an example of my one of my older ones. This is the last page. So how it works is this is where I attach them. So I have my front, my, my front page and my back page are together. So let me mimic that right now. So my front page and my back page 
are together like this, just like this, right? And then I flip it over, flip it over, and here is where I enter everything. I've got this now. So it needs to go like this. Yes, that's right. So I flip them over and then I go like this. Okay, so here I'm putting in the last of my covers. And now I'm going to squeeze it shut. That's right, that looks good. Okay, there's the back and here's the front. Yay, I did it right. You can tell that I don't do this very often because it's complicated, very complicated when I do choose to do it once in a while. Um, this Zutter tool is something that I found at a garage sale. Um, it's not my most favorite thing. I found these little um, cl clips, rings, at a 99 cent store, and they're quite nice because they're plastic and you can open and close them. It's not easy to open and close them, so you know, so it won't open you know, by accident and your papers will fall out. But these are also quite nice rings. So if you did something like this with three hole punch or two hole punch, um, this would be sufficient. You know, you don't need to use something like this. Um, you can also search on, you know, Amazon, for example, and see what kind of binding tools are, are available. This is just one option. I think there's something else called a cinch that I've seen people use um, that they're very happy with. So this is just one idea. So now I am ready to go in and start collaging on my pages. Right? This is this is going to be fun. This is going to last me for the next couple of years. It takes me it takes me a couple of years to to get through them just because I take my time and, you know, I I have fun with it. So that is that. So this one, this one this one. So now that you know how to put one of these glue books together, I hope you will construct one of your own. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you the next time.